extraordinary night at Villa Park from 3-1 down to 3-3. Unai Emery's side have it in their own hands going into the final day and it might not even come to that. Here's some Villa reaction in a moment. Yuri Tielemans first. The captain, John McGinn. John, Yuri, that was a significant night for Aston Villa, but you really did have to dig deep and work hard. Uh, just a, a brilliant effort towards the end. I know we got a bit of fortune with the third goal, but it's been a tough couple of weeks. Uh, manager will not admit it, but boys are out on their feet, giving absolutely everything. Yuri's obviously coming back, playing through the pain barrier. Uh, some of us are, are sort of half men out there, um, but... This place got us going when we got the second goal. Big John, he's, he's a bit nuts. Uh, he's, he's a nightmare sometimes to have in your team, but he's he's got moments of quality. The second one wasn't a bit of quality, but the first one was a, was a top finish, and uh, we we'll need to try and keep his feet on the ground the next couple of days. That was some substitution that, that, that was made, but for you, Yuri, I mean, it was a little bit shell-shocked around here when you conceded with that own goal with Emmy Martinez, but once you fired them level, the momentum seemed to swing your way. Yeah, I think we created a couple of chances after that. Unfortunately, we didn't score, but in the end, we, we got the draw. Like uh, like John said here, we, we fought right until the end, and that's the most important thing. It's the, the mentality that we have. It was such an open game, so much activity going on in both boxes. It was, yeah. Unfortunately, we couldn't score more because we, we felt like we deserved a couple more goals, especially in the first half, and then uh, still a chance to make it 4-3 at the end. So... Yeah, it's, uh, it's unlucky, but uh, we'll take the draw. John, when you say it's been tough, we know it's been really busy with Europe as well. How difficult was it to, to lift yourself with the injuries and the setbacks that you've had for this night tonight? No, I don't think it's been difficult for us as players. We've got, um, I don't know about Yuri, he might have played with Anderlecht in the Champions League, but there's some of us uh, that have never been close to Champions League football in our life, so... The, the goal for us is, is massive throughout the season. I think what's going under the radar is you hear about everyone's injuries. Uh, we're not comparing ourselves to other teams, but the manager's got a no-excuse mentality. Uh, we've not used it as an excuse. People keep writing us off all throughout the year. Uh, we've just floated under the radar nicely, and we're so, so close to fourth position now, and uh, we'll get the Man City tops on tomorrow night and see what happens. <laughs> They'll certainly be watching. I think the entire world will be watching Spurs Manchester City uh, tomorrow night. That's for sure. You both said at half time, Villa have to score next to get something out of it. And of course, three minutes into the second half, Liverpool scored next. Darrell Quanta's first Premier League goal. And at this point, it was looking like an uphill mountain for Villa. It certainly was, Steve. But I mean, we were talking to each other there and, and we thought it's, it's not over just yet. You know, Villa can score goals. This is an interesting goal, actually. Just watch Trent Alexander-Arnold there. That little dummy there sends Pau Torres back and plays everybody onside, actually. Kwanzaa at the back post. He gets a run mm. on his man. And uh, I love the way he hangs. He jumps early, he hangs. He doesn't go for power, Tim. He no. just guides it into that. It's exactly goal. the reason. Often people think when they're watching at home, think, why do they put two on the ball and one never takes it? It's for that reason. Because he's a dummy. As soon as he goes up to the ball, he takes the defenders deep and allows Konza there to be on side at the back post. Wonderful header into the far corner. Now we're talking about fine margins. Five minutes later, Villa started their comeback, or so they thought, yeah. through Wally Watkins. I, when he, when Konza scores that goal, I thought he could get very naughty here and the goal difference could start getting a bit close if it goes to that um, but this is interesting I thought he should have left it for Derby and so did Ollie Watkins we saw the, the, the little bit of communication you'll see after um, is inches but Derby you can quite clearly see is onside um, and Bailey there is, is it's marginal but he's just a toenail offside and Oli finishes it brilliantly but look at them there you know they're arguing with each other because Oli's saying you should have left it he said if I'm on side we, we tried to lip read him here said, if, I'm, if I'm on side what are you going to say to me and, and Oli would have said I'll say sorry but you were, you were offside I mean they've done the check he's offside he should have left it for Diaby if Diaby just it squares it it's an easy pass into Oli Watkins and they would have scored yeah, exactly that, exactly that. Um, and you know that sometimes. I mean, I'm sure Diaby was screaming at him, leave it to me, because yeah. Diaby would have known that he was probably, you know, um, quite close, and he would have known he was definitely onside. So I would have thought there'd be a bit of communication. They're only a couple of yards away from each other, they would have heard each other. So I thought Diaby, you know, either he wasn't vocal enough or he was ignored, one of the two. 
So, at 85 minutes, they still haven't scored. Then yeah. John Duran is thrown on and the game changed on its head. Yeah, it was. I mean, this is a bad mistake by McAllister. Again, I don't know what communication, but really you don't need communication. You should know what's around you. I was thinking he should be passing to Diaby here. Um, however, he had just come on. He wanted to make a name for himself. That was a great first touch, by the way. And Diaby, just at the bottom of your picture there, I thought, just lay it off. But uh, he didn't. Now, Virgil van Dijk, he's got to be giving him some form of message, but yeah. I don't think he gives him anything to him. It's a poor pass from Virgil in the first place. I mean, Callister lets it slip, but, I mean, you, should, you don't want that ball in there. Certainly when you've got a comfortable lead, uh, let, no, take, give all the credit to Duran there. He takes it onto his left foot and smashes it into the bottom corner. And then the, you think, well, perhaps they've deserved a little bit of luck and they got it in the end. I mean, it was a good, a good pass. First John two. McGinn was driving them through already. He flicks this through to him and it just comes off his knee. He has no intention of putting that over Alisson, but he got the, uh, he got the luck, what I think they possibly deserved for their endeavour and their drive. And like I say, determination when they're, they're running on no petrol there. They have absolutely got nothing left in the tank and the crowd were trying to drive them forward and they deserved that little bit of luck. Yeah, lovely play from Diaby there. Breaks through the midfield. First touch was brilliant. Shows up McAllister for pace there. He ran straight away from him. And then, of course, there is a bit of luck in it. Um, a lot of luck, in fact. But they had the momentum at that stage, Steve. And, uh, you know, if the, the game had continued, who knows what, have, what would have happened because there was plenty of goals coming in that game. Well, it does continue. And I've got two questions for you. How good a save is this from Alisson? And yeah. if you're Diaby, are you shooting as well? I'm definitely shooting, yeah. I mean, I know there's players free in the middle there, but Van Dijk's almost coming from that angle, so it's very difficult to pass it through him. Uh, he decides to go for a pace, but Alisson, yeah, very strong arm. Great goalkeeper, great save. OK, um, that is how it finished. 3-3, three, three. we've got some Villa reaction. Here's the Liverpool manager, Jurgen Klopp. Jurgen, how are those feelings? Somehow it got away from you tonight. But how are those feelings right now? No, oh, it got away from us um, tonight. There's no doubt about that. We played a really good football game. Everything could have happened tonight as one team is playing really for absolutely everything and one play team is playing football and wants to win the game. And um, we were really, really good. We played a lot of good stuff because Aston Villa had loads of problems. Um, then, I'm not sure, before we, before we changed... We, we, we gave them too many chances in that moment. That pretty much we were not compact enough anymore. It was very intense for the boys, obviously, and then um, they created too much. Uh, the balls um, we couldn't defend the midfield. We were too often in our box. That's why we made the changes. And then we make a mistake. We're on the three-two. That's how it is. You, you should not pass the ball there, but we have to show in different ways. And we could we keep it? Yes, of course. But it happens. And in that moment, we open the door for them. In that moment, the atmosphere was there, um, and then they they scored the equaliser. I don't even know how. Somebody hit somebody. I think and the ball goes in. Um, yeah. That's it. Now I'm. I'm really. Uh, I think the the character and the attitude the boys showed show is absolutely outstanding. That's most important in our in our situation now. Um, so would have loved to win the game. I think directly after we changed with the super football moment when, when Dom is in the box and we had before that good moment. So, but then in in the moment um, when we when we gave away the three two, yeah, that was then really really tricky. And obviously then 3-3, three, three, then they controlled, then they wanted to, to keep it as well. So that's it. That's the story of the game. Uh, so Villa uh, doing their lap of honour uh, around the stadium at the end of their final home game, having got that point and denied Jurgen Klopp's side all three. Uh, incidentally, just second time in Premier League history with six minutes to go, Liverpool have been two up and not won the game. But when we go back to the first half, Tim, I mean, Villa, again, they, they could have easily scored a goal with what we've agreed is a miss of the season here from Diego Carlos yeah it, it's a, it is a huge miss Steve it is um, it, it comes at him quick I think he goes for it with the right leg I don't like the way he pushes Ollie Watkins out the way he just can't get his feet ready quick enough and, and by the time he tries to lift it he's just a bit slow I just don't think he gets there in time so yes it is a big miss it is a big miss, but I just think it's more the pace on the ball and he's just not quick enough for it. For me, I think he's got too much on his mind to get there before Ollie Watkins. You're a team. You need to score that goal. It's very important. You need to leave it to your centre forward. He will have full 
he'd be no full well. He'll see the whole picture. He will know there's no Liverpool player there. He is trying to get in front of his teammate selfishly to score a goal himself. Leave it to Ollie Watkins to put it in the back of the net. And because he goes in there, because he's occupied with Oli, he just takes his eye off it. And it's, and it's gone past his foot before he knows it. it takes it's a horrendous step. miss. It takes it's probably not step. the worst miss we've ever seen there. At Aston Villa. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Ronnie yeah, Rosenthal. This fixture, actually, wasn't it? Yeah, here we go. This is the fixture. Now, I think this is a worse miss. I mean, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ronnie. Oh, that's a worse miss. I mean, does it bobble? It's a long way out. So, <laughs> that's a worse miss. That one came at him quick before. That is... It's, I hope Ronnie on his version tells not watching. That's that's the worst. <laughs> if he was, he's just turned off. <laughs> that was a bad miss from Ronnie. I've, I've, I have mentioned that to him a few times, so he's probably bored of it. Right, mm. put your Tottenham hat back on now. Uh, I mean, changes nothing for Tottenham. Right, they have the same guy. I know they have to win, and I know they could have could have had a draw. Tottenham will play one way to win football matches, and I've said it all season. This man goes with an approach to win games, take maximum points. They have not had a draw at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium all season. They win or they lose. He goes for it. It's going to be an electric game tomorrow. You have to give him a chance because of the firepower what Tottenham have. But on the other hand, they leave themselves wide open. And if Man City take their chances, it could be a cricket score. But you know, sometimes <laughs> we talk about games and, and one of the sides are sitting in and one draws a great result. This is an extraordinary game in the last week of the season yep. where both teams simply have to win. Yeah, exactly that. Um, and I think sometimes because Manchester City have so much of the ball all the time, even the best laid plans, even the attacking teams, they just strangle the life out of you. You just can't get the ball off them. But as Tim said, I, I just can't see how Tottenham can play any other way. They can't play defensively. Can't, they can't sit back. They might get pushed back a little bit, but as soon as they win the ball, they will, they will be off and, and flooding men forward. So, I mean, if ever there's a game that's got loads of goals, we thought it about tonight, but we're, gonna, we're thinking about tomorrow as well. Just two attacking teams and uh, both need the win. It's all the ingredients for an absolute yeah. cracker. And again, if Tottenham, if, and it is a big if, yeah. this is a Manchester City side who are unbeaten in yeah. 33 games yeah. in all competitions. If Spurs do get the win, they put the trophy into Arsenal's grasp now yeah. on the final day. They won't be thinking about that. The fans will, but the players won't. They've got no intention of... of You've been in that situation, haven't you? I have. I have. And isn't it? We never mentioned to... In 99, we, we, uh, I was playing for Tottenham. We went Old to Trafford. Old Trafford and we scored. Les Ferdinand scored his one and only goal at, um, at Old Trafford and no one celebrated. Not the Man United okay. fans and not the Tottenham was, fans. There was, was 5,000 Tottenham fans yeah. there and never celebrated because it could have helped Arsenal out. Now, it'd be interesting how that atmosphere is. But in the dressing room, you want to win. You play for your shirt. That's what you get paid for, to win football matches. Postacoglu said it today. You want no other, no other interest other than winning the game for Tottenham. Because if they win two games now, there's a real chance. And they've obviously got a chance. Of, they've got a chance of finishing fourth. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if, if Aston Villa had won today, then OK, you might ask that question. But now they can get into fourth place, then there is no question what's going to happen. They're going to go for it. And Villa, if Tottenham were to win, I'd say it's a bigger, they've got to go to Palace, who've suddenly won five out of six yeah. on the final day. Yeah, with Eze, Elise, Mateta, how are they playing at the moment? Eze. Eze. Eze, yeah. You don't want to play them at the moment, especially at Sellers Park. It's the last place you want to go, especially when you're running on empty. They want to go, they don't want anything in that last game. Because Palace, there's something on that game for them there. And a lot of these Palace players, the eyes of the world will be on that game. And they're playing for their futures elsewhere, I would suggest. Look, they've had a decent... Glasner's done a good job since he's been there. But Eze and Elise, you know, Anderson, they want to get away. They want to play at big clubs. And there's a good chance they might. It's in the shop window. That puts them in the shop window. Mm -hmm. And, obviously, Tottenham play against Sheffield United. So you would have thought that Tottenham are going to have a better chance there. So it really needs to get wrapped up before, that, uh, before it comes to that, that last game, I'd suggest. He just keeps on giving this Premier League season, doesn't it? It's absolutely remarkable. 3-3 uh, tonight that takes all eyes on tomorrow, not just for the title, but for the Champions League spot as well. From the three of us, we will see you soon. Take care.